and really this being the last class this is this is uh it's hard to say it's my favorite class because I, I i really enjoy the class and i've really enjoyed interacting with all of you and uh seeing your reflections and um previewing the the lessons that 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 you created were i mean these the these were awesome. So um, in this last class, what we do is, is we get a number of you to uh, to volunteer to just walk us through the lessons that you created. And uh, I think that, um, I mean, <laughs> these lessons are so good. And um, you just, you, you, you have to hear your fellow students as they describe them because, um, you know, they, the, the, they, slides themselves or the uh the documents themselves they're great but when you hear somebody explain it it just like brings it up brings it up to another level so um i think um why don't we why don't we start and uh who wants to be the person who gets to go first and knows that they're already done and that everybody appreciated them who's willing to be that person I'll be that person. Ah, great. Okay. So, uh, so Kathleen, do you want to, do you want to present the lesson yourself? Let me make you a, um, a co-host. Um, if you could show it, I don't know how to. I'd be fine with that. That'd be oh. great. You just okay. have to sound like you know what you're talking about. What we do. Okay. Okay. So let me just find your lesson then, um, and then get it up. Like my screen. I think I can, I see share, but I don't know how to share my screen. I'm on an iPad, so it might be a little bit. Oh, different. that's going to be harder. Yes. Okay. Oh, so, okay. Um, I mean, I, I, if you're on the, the iPad, you might be able to share your screen. Um, but I know, let's see, I, I want to make this larger. Okay. So I, I can share the screen because um, I have it. Um, let's see. It's called inflow. Yeah. This is it, right? Yeah. And I don't typically write lesson plans for elementary. Okay. So this is my shot at it. Well, um, it's great. So I, I put that in the slide um, that it would be more like fourth grade so, mm -hmm. or middle school. So it's um, basically it's to teach students how it feels to be in flow and then the contrast of how it feels to not be in flow. Mm -hmm. And then I was using just as a, what I learned um, in, I think it was our third class, the quadrant of when you're feeling challenged or not challenged, competent or not competent. Um, so the first slide is um, just saying what I, what the objectives are. Okay. And the second slide is um, being in flow. What does it feel like to be in flow? And that's just to introduce it. And um, the ah. second slide, yeah, and it's just a, that's a lake up in that's really Lake Valhalla nice. in Washington. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the second slide is just a mindfulness exercise to get them to box breathe. Um, and um, all the art in here is art that I made. So I didn't steal wow. it from anybody. Uh -huh. So you just teaching the kids how to box breathe um, four times, like in for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four. And to just get them to reset. So a mindfulness exercise. Right. And then the next slide is um, what are things I do that make you feel like I'm in the water, like a fish, content, at peace, and happy. So just to get them to, to think of times when they feel at peace and content and happy and get them into that. Um, they're challenged. They don't know it yet, but into that quadrant of I feel challenged and I feel competent. And then the next slide is um, when I feel content, so um, these can either be in groups or pairs or as a large group, but I would give them an exercise of this degree after I tell them what makes me feel content. You know, floating in a lake where nothing's bothering me and I'm in the sun and I feel like I'm in flow and I'm just floating with the water. So it smells like, and I would give them my examples and then we would go through their example. What does it smell like when you're content or in flow? What does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? What does it taste like if it's something that they can taste? 
So that takes them to what their contentness feels like. Um, and when I'm there in flow, this is how I would describe it. I feel like, and hopefully we could get some words like, I feel like at peace, I feel happy, I feel content, I feel giddy, however they describe it. it. I look like, so maybe they can describe themselves as I have a smile on my face. And then to get to the core of, I think, what are they thinking? I think I'm good at this. I think I like this. And then I imagine, um, just in case somebody has a really creative imagination, because kids do. And then I notice around me these things. So what do they notice when they're in flow? How does that look? And the next slide um, is uh, sometimes this is where we switch it. Sometimes we might feel different, like we're not in flow. Maybe we feel frustrated or even bored. And those are two of the quadrants where um, it's super challenging and they don't feel confident or competent or it's um, not very challenging and they feel super competent. So they're bored. I use those two quadrants. Um, imagine feeling one of these things. What might um, with you, what might that be like for you? What words do you hear? So we're getting them into their self-talk of when they're frustrated or bored. Um, and that would be in pairs or groups or in a large group at first. And then sometimes when we feel different, like we are not in flow, we don't know what to do to get back in flow, how might we do this work? So just an open-ended question to see what they think they might be able to do. How might we take ourselves out of feeling frustrated or bored and back to feeling content, happy, or even playful? And then the next slide gives them the ideas of, um, when I don't feel like I'm in flow, how can I get back into flow? So it's kind of like a little journey. Um, and these are all of the examples that we can talk through. Um, I could tell myself perhaps I can do this and we can read through the whole list all the way down to, I can say maybe I can make this fun by, so just the self-talk that they could start to use with themselves to take themselves from feeling frustrated, bored, or even anxious. We don't talk about anxious in this, but it's one of the quadrants to mm -hmm. get them back into that upper quadrant of, um, I feel in flow. So here, these are the ideas that they can self-talk with. And then we take them back to a mindfulness exercise um, where they're feeling like they're in flow, like the water is flowing, just like in that first fish picture. Now it's <laughs> there's the dog in there. So just kind of taking them back to a mindfulness exercise where they're breathing and they talk through, we're going to breathe, box breathe five times. And then we're going to think of something that's hard or frustrating. And now we're going to listen to our self-talk. And then they're going to start putting in words like, in their own mind, perhaps I can make a game out of this. And then asking, did you hear yourself say those words and getting them into that mindset of, let's imagine something else about doing that thing. Let's imagine we're having fun doing this challenging thing. What does that feel like now? And say what it feels like, and then they can feel it. And then I even asked, can you smile about it? Does it feel pleasant? This is what flow feels like. So back to that idea of flow. And the next slide is, um, just Einstein, because kids are really smart. And I love this quote, <laughs> that everybody is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will feel like its whole life that it's stupid. So that's just, you know, sometimes we do feel this way. Sometimes we're expected to do things that aren't easy for us. But when um, we say words to ourselves, or maybe somebody else says words to us, and it takes us out of flow, what are those words that we hear and how does it make us feel? And then again, moving us back into flow using the list of things, um, the quadrants. And this might be too advanced for elementary, but I thought it would be just you know building a schema for them. When I feel anxious, I usually notice myself. So that's that upper quadrant of being super challenged and not very competent. And then when I feel frustrated, I usually notice myself feeling that way. That's the lower challenge and the not very competent. Um, and then the upper quadrant and the lower right. So the lower right is when I feel bored. So they're super competent and it doesn't feel very challenging. And then at the top, what we're shooting for is when I'm in flow, I'm super challenged and I feel super confident or competent. So just kind of introducing this concept. And then um, getting back to uh, using lists of eight. So they had a lot of ideas that we went through at the beginning where um, that little hiker and the chickens, and I think there was a dog in that picture where they got all of those ideas of self-talk. Perhaps I can make this fun. Perhaps I can 
make a game out of it. Um, they can play around with these sheets and, and say to themselves, what do I feel when I feel anxious? And we can talk about anxious for the first time here, but I didn't want to make it a big, huge part of this because kids aren't really going to want to talk about feeling anxious, but it's an emotion that they feel and it's in that, those four mm -hmm. quadrants. And then how they talk to a friend um, on the right. So I wanted them to contrast, this is how I talk to myself and this is how I would talk to a friend. And hey, if I had talked to a friend that way, maybe I could talk to myself that way. So we go through each quadrant on the next two slides. This, this one is anxious, this one is frustrated, and then the next one is bored. So we take them through all three quadrants that aren't flow, and then um, they can come up with these together. And then now at the end, do you feel like you can help yourself now when you have unpleasant feelings and are not in flow? So just that contrast of, I feel content and things are pleasant, and this is what it feels like unpleasant. Feelings are not in flow, and this is what flow feels like. Now I ask them, can you help? A, do you think you can help a friend? And then these are extension activities. This is a mood meter. I don't know if you've seen this before, but it's a graphic that I like because it shows tons of emotions. And it um, it shows unpleasant and pleasant, and then low energy, high energy. It's kind of the same quadrant, but it's more mm -hmm. kids level. And then those are extension exercises that I thought we could use. And then the last one, these aren't my favorite examples of books. There aren't a lot of SEL books out there about fish. Hmm. So, but they are good with um, rainbow fish. It's kind of sweet how they talk to one another and the friends help rainbow fish go on these journeys. So that's it. Wow. You packed a lot. This is great. Um, cool. it, so, so it's, you know, for me, you know, one of the things, let me have to, change my screen here okay so so one of the things is the way you get the kids to separate where they were before to you know with the reset with the, with the mindfulness and you do that a, a few more times the way you get the kids discussing among themselves because we're all social learners um the way you've made the language kid friendly the way you you tied together how they feel their the the five senses the way you've allowed them to kind of future pace like this is the way i want to feel how would i get this way um this is uh um this is the way i sometimes feel you know how i would how would i um how would i talk to myself and then contrasting how they might talk to a friend who was having some of these issues versus how they were talking to themselves and kind of um understanding that uh they can be they can have more grace for themselves also um it was just like there's there's so much in there i thought that was great I, I really, Oof. I love that. So Oof. any other comments? I got it too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, that, 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 that's why, that's one of the reasons why I, I love doing this is because um, you guys end up doing, you know, really, really good work beyond, you know, way beyond what, what, what the course did. So uh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Any other comments? Anybody else? Um, ask Kathleen a question. Yeah. Please. Hi, Kathleen. Um, I like how you <sighs> use flow. Do you ever use Go Noodle with flow? Because there's like some guided like meditations that go with that called flow on Go Noodle. Oh, no, I haven't. I'll check it out. All right. Oh, great idea. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so, so that was a great example of how fantastic your, your, your lessons are. Who would like to go second? I'll go ahead and go second. Okay. Now, um, do you, let's see, let me find you on here. Um, I think usually I think when you, oh, you're already a co-host. Okay. So you could, you, you should be able to present. Right. I well, think I can share. Yeah. I companion start summary, share screen. Okay. So. Does everyone see that? Yes, will to power. Right on. So I start out a little in the weeds. Um, I'm able to teach in a detention school, and I I wanted to. Um, a lot of them are interested in some really complex things, and they don't necessarily have the reading level to learn it. So we just had some fun. So I I start them out with um a couple philosophers, and then I go into. Maybe I can. Perhaps I can, and that's that's where I'm heading with with this. So, okay, 
So I go, will to power? And I, I do ask them before we even look at the slide, what do you think it means, will to power? And amazingly, a lot of them really come up with things that are, are that are in the sheet right here. Um, we put them on the whiteboard and they get personal growth, overcoming obstacles, self-mastery, improvement. They have to spend time thinking about it because not normally how we speak will to power. But when they do, that's what they come up with. And then I emphasize it does not necessarily refer to power over others. And I go, Victor Frankel, and there's no E, that's spell correct. Excuse mm -hmm. me, Frankel. Mm -hmm. Victor Frankel referred to this as will to meaning, will to meaning. So it's like, okay. And we talk a little bit about that, go, let's see what's coming up. And then I go, I have them put their heads on the desk and just close their eyes. And I have them remember doing something that they thought was difficult, something they thought they'd never be able to do. And then I said, well, how did you do that? What did you do? How did it feel when you completed this task? Then I have them and I take three to five minutes just to write down the thing they did and talk about how they did it. Um, if they can't think of anything, I allow them to make it up. A lot of times the thing they make up is something they want to go after anyway. So it's a good dry run at making a change. Um, and then I check on them. We, we all share with each other when we're done. And then I just go Frederick Nietzsche. And we don't do a whole like study on Nietzsche. We just do some of his quotes. They all do not like what doesn't kill us, make us stronger. Yeah. I think it's because it's been said many times. Um, but they, and we love life, not because we are used to living, but because we are used to loving. I, I actually taught this yesterday. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm in the afternoon. I have a, I do get to do a social emotional learning group. That's one of my classes. So I did that. Um, they had a hard time grasping that. And I might pull that out if I do this in the future. He who laughs best today will also laugh last. And they got that. If I, if I do things well in the moment, in the long run, I'll be better off too. And I'm like, yeah, you're getting it. Don't delay. And so I'm like, that's some good stuff. That's really going to feed into what we're doing later on. And they were all on that. And then I go, when you stare into the abyss, the, ab the abyss stares back at you. And I go, believe it or not, there will be lessons coming down the line that we'll be talking about this. You know, we're talking about a thing called a shadow. And then we got to Viktor Frankl, and I went ahead and used his pictures that they used with him when he was in Auschwitz. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar, familiar with Viktor Frankl, an Australian psychotherapist who made logotherapy. And then his quotes, and they really liked these quotes, um, especially the girls. He goes, those who have a why to live can beat almost any how, and they all got that. And a lot of these guys are locked up and trying to get out of jail and trying to stay out of jail. So they really applied it to that. Love is the only way to grasp another human being in the innermost core of their personality. And I'm like, well, <clears throat> so I mean, well, you know, not judging them or doing the, all these other things. I go, yeah, we do that. But the main way we understand grasp another human being is through love. That's what Viktor Frankl said. Suffering ceases to be suffering at the moment if it finds meaning. And a lot of life is pursuing meaning. And happiness cannot be pursued. It must ensue, come naturally. Well, happiness is a byproduct. If I aim at being happy, I'm unlikely to be successful. But if I aim at really teaching you guys something, I, I might find myself happy at the end of it because we got to share and have a great time. Um, there you go, application. So I go, they may be uber cool. I had to do the uber because German, right? And um was that have to do with us? So I'm like, okay, we talked about all these philosophers. Like, go, what does that have to do with us? So they started by sharing stories they've written. Um, and if they prefer not to feel, read, they can feel free to share the story off the top of their head. Some of my students have a hard time reading. And then we take some time to talk about each story. And then we go, what are some things you think are impossible for you? And they listed all sorts of things. And some of them said staying out of jail. And I'm mm -hmm. like, wow, let's see if we can make a plan for you to stay out of jail. And it doesn't mean you're a pushover. It means you're making a plan to stay out of jail. Be brave and share some things you can't do. And I just have them write a few things on paper and then I write them on the board because I didn't want them to throw it out in front of everybody. I wanted to feel safe to share it. Let me make some money. Cool. 
And what are some things you think are impossible for you? So go on. How we respond when we are asked to do impossible things. So then we did write on the board how we feel or react when someone asks us to do something we think we can't do or we won't be good at. And I said, every feeling we share is important and valid. And they all said they feel frustrated or angry or like they just want to give up. And it turned into be a much longer conversation than I thought. But it all made sense because I've been observing them work and I can see it. So I go, I can't. I go, what if every time you hear, I can't, whisper to yourself, perhaps I can. I go, what do you think that means? I go, I can't say that for you. I can suggest you say it for yourself. You say it for yourself, it has power. If I say it for you, it does not have as much power. So every time you hear that, say, perhaps I can. And go, especially if it's something you want to accomplish, if you want to stay out of jail, if you want to get that job when you're done here, if you want to complete high school, perhaps you can. Then I go, but I know I can't. I go on to that. Still, you may doubt yourself, but I know I can. I've tried before and I've failed. Say, I can't do this yet. Whisper to yourself, but I can't do it yet. I can't do it yet. I can get to it. We talked a little about that. I can do this later. And I go, I say this to myself all the time and I never get to it. Procrastinate. Go, How many times have you said, I'll do this later and you didn't get to it? And they said, all the time. They said, whenever they say this, they're not going to get to it. It's it's kind of wild how self-aware these guys were on that. Say, I can do this now, but then may never get to it. And I go, I, I can do this now. Whisper to yourself, I can do it now. I'll just do the next best thing. And I added this. Don't think of all the million things you have to do. And the next step can just be a small one, right? Maybe it's writing a five paragraph essay, write your first sentence, decide your topic. I've seen people take a week to decide a topic because they're so frozen up. I go, just, just decide your topic right now and then go with that. If it doesn't work out, we can change it, but just decide, right? And a lot of times you do the next best thing, it just kind of snowballs. We do talk about the brain and I talked about the hippocampus and all the things in the temporal lobes, which are, are um, heuristic brain. I don't think that's heuristic brain, but more the emotional part of the brain. I've talked about the prefrontal cortex. And right now I'm pointing at it. You can't see me pointing mm. at it, but I'm, mm. I'm pointing at the different areas. And we just talked about fight, flight, and freeze. And that's how our brain is. And then the main thing I want to get is, you know, we can program ourselves and the programming is like a trap. And I go, it's like flies on fly paper. And a lot of my guys know what that is. And then, so we go to this image careful, watch out for mind traps like I can't or I can do this later. Um, you can just end up stuck. And I don't want to see that happen. We talk about justifications, things that you could be saying to yourself while resisting doing it goes, I won't ever use this. We talk about that. I can't do anything about this. So why bother? We talked about that. It's a long way off. I don't have to deal with this yet. We talk about procrastination. I'm too tired. I'll do it another time. And again, we talk about procrastination. A lot of our lives, we are tired. It doesn't matter anyway. And we spend a good amount of time on that. And um, don't want to go too far because sometimes these folks are dealing with things that go beyond the scope of this lesson. But I always say that it always matters and it's always good to care. When my students say, I don't care, I always respond with, I do care. Let's see if we can help you get to that, right? And I go, can you tell me some more? And they tell me some more. And we talked about that. And we can reset our brains to be creative, to think critically, and to be resourceful. We talked about each area of those and how they help us. And I go, man, you guys are all resourceful. I mean, you may use a lot of your resources for doing things that got you in jail, but you're resourceful. And then we have an exit card. Write in your journal something you have wanted to do but have not been able to do yet. What strategies have you learned in this lesson that you can use to get yourself unstuck and move forward with a life you want to live? And that's it. Wow. That could um, that that could really cause them to start 
you know, rethinking the things that they're doing and, um, you know, come up with ways of doing the things that really do allow them to give, to live the life that, that they want to. And you're, you know, you're having them talk through all these different things that they use on themselves to convince themselves either not to do the things that they know they should, that they feel that they should be doing or to do things that they know that they shouldn't. And also giving them the self power to be able to change that around without a hundred percent negating it, but, but, but suggesting that perhaps there are other ways so that that opens their mind to the fact that there might be other ways. Mm -hmm. I think, can you stop sharing your screen? Also, can you? Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, that's okay. no, that's I didn't okay. even think about it. That was yeah. All done and <laughs> yeah, I, this is this. this. And you, and you gave this well, lesson today. You said right. I gave it yesterday, and I did have to finish it up today. It took over a day because okay. it oh. it caused mm -hmm. a lot of discussion. We're going to talk about social emotional stuff and doing that. I, I mm -hmm. started that way. And then when, by the time you're into the other stuff, they're like, oh, well, okay. But they didn't care because we had a basis in other stuff. Mm -hmm. So so the lesson ended up taking about how long, do you think? It took an hour and 20 minutes. In total? Or an hour, I, no, an hour and 10 minutes because I have a 50. Well, yeah. yeah. No, that's um, it, that, that's that's fantastic. And and the their end reactions, because I'm always curious. Oh, it is really, really mixed. It's it's kind of wild. Some of the kids who have longer times there mm -hmm. really were into it. And some of the kids who only had a few days. So I think some of the kids who are feeling really big consequences mm -hmm. really wanted to hook and get into, maybe I can do this a different way. I'm going to have to go to Green Hill for two and a half years. That's one kid. And another mm -hmm. kid is going to be 60 days with us in the jail. But mm -hmm. some of the kids who are younger, like 13, 14, maybe their brain's not getting everything i know they can do that perhaps i can right right but their mm -hmm. motivation just wasn't as sparked up yet yeah especially if we had like some of them were there three days it's like oh, i'm gonna be out of here in a minute anyway mm -hmm. but yes yeah, some really if they had a lot of time they wanted out they wanted to look at that and mm -hmm. pursue it well fantastic um any other comments from from people i yeah. i you know I, I thought it was really good um and then Adrian also had a comment in the in the chat about the fish theme that there's a book called The Snail or The Snail on the Whale. Uh, that would be a good fit. But that's not necessarily for you, I think. That was more for that was for Kathleen, but you know, yeah. maybe you can <laughs> it was for the last one, but I wanted to jump in and just say um I really thought that was scaffolded so nicely in terms of guiding the thinking and having the quotes and the like one thought at a time. And being able to talk through it, um, it just felt really like you did a great job of creating a safe space to, to take in the material and it wasn't overwhelming. Um, I thought that was great. Well, thank you. I also like, John, uh, you know, if you can introduce kids to Viktor Frankl, uh, it, it's tough to feel sorry for yourself or to do things when you see someone like Frankl and what he mm -hmm. overcame and um, his perspective on life. So, and, and I loved your comment of when they say, um, I don't care. And, and you say you do like, I'm, I'm stealing that one, bud. Uh, that, that's yeah, really good. Me too. Thank you. So yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Who wants to go next? It's fun, right? Because I know there's great lessons here. So once we go next. I, I'll go next. Okay, Meryl. Good. Um, let's see. So I can make, I can, first of all, make you a co-host so that you can share. And uh, But if also, if you'd prefer, um, I can get the lesson up on my screen and I can share it. Okay, that would that would probably be better. I mean, okay. if if you do that, I have access to move the slides as I need to. Well, basically, you just say uh, next. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. And 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 I'll I'll move to next. So let me go to the screen and there. Uh, okay. So I mean, can people see that, or should I go to uh, slideshow mode? 
It's okay. I, okay. Okay. Um, so this is my slide and I teach third grade. So I'm thinking from the perspective of an elementary student. Mm -hmm. um, I chose growth mindset because a lot of the students coming into third grade, they have um, a foundation of adding and subtracting and a, a one step word problems. So they've mastered that or, or close to mastering. But once we get into third grade and we start um, addressing multiplication and division, all suddenly I see them hit a wall. And I thought, you know, this growth mindset will help them overcome that wall. And, um, and uh, like help overcome those negative thoughts. And also um, I thought too, is this would be like a, a reality check that this is what happens in our mind um, when we struggle. We have these thoughts, so we have choices to make. Next slide. Okay. Can can we? Oh. You see um, it, or it, yeah. it's it's an attitude about learning. Yeah. Okay. And growth mindset is an attitude about learning. How are attitudes? We could have a positive attitude which is like, hey, I can do this, I can try, or a negative attitude, I don't want to do this, it's too hard, I don't like it. So I know that when I do a negative attitude, I know that it's so much harder for me to stop those thoughts because it's like a big rolling ball and it's I have a hard time stopping it. But if I do a positive attitude, I, it would be easier for me to get my brain with me together we can work together to solve the problem and that's part of growth mindset i'm having a, a learning attitude next slide okay um again growth mindset is having a positive attitude about learning when it's hard also it's about choosing to listen to the voice in our head so we have two different voices a positive voice and a negative voice and i'm going to um, share a story in just a moment Next slide. Okay, so we have two voices in our mind. We can hear them quietly in the background. They sound like this. Um, the story is going to, they sound like this. Um, is a growth mindset statement. So we can either tell ourselves, um, I'm not good at this. That's the negative side. Or we can choose to say, when am I, what am I missing? I, I'm awesome at this. Or we can try thinking, I'm on the right track. I give up. Or we could try to tell ourselves, you hear the tell or, or the voice we can say to our brain is, I will use some of the strategies we've learned this is too hard. This may take some time and effort. I can't make any, I can't make this any better. Or we can say, I can always improve, so I'll keep trying. I made a mistake. We could say, mistakes help me to learn better. She's so smart. I will never be that smart I'm going to figure out how she does it another negative thought we could have is it's good enough we could try it is really is it really my best work um another thought plan a didn't work try thinking good things good thing the alphabet has 25 more letters so I have 24 more 25 more times to try we have two voices in our mind. We can choose to listen to one that is going to help us through this situation or listen, listen to the one that makes it difficult to do the right thing. And this is where I would stop and ask the students, uh, where, if I say this, what would you tell me? If your partner says this, what could you tell them to encourage them to keep going? Because we'll, we work together in this classroom and we work to help one another. Um, okay, the next. And this is the story of a girl who made a million mistakes. Here it is. Uh, would you like me to play this story? 
or do you so want I me think to in class i um i don't think we will but i mean i'll, I'll just quickly okay yeah unfortunately it starts off with a commercial and okay. for a couple of, so i'm just i'm gonna you know can you this uh i i guess it's about a girl who makes a lot of mistakes but she gets better right yeah. yes and um we can move on okay so next That's slide. A, and kids love those videos too yes uh growth mindset which voice will you listen to i made mine really simplistic and short because I want to run this through the classroom the first week of school and then periodically throughout the school year. Um, I'm going to do this and then I will have where um, in a couple of and throughout the week, I will have them where I will have a growth mindset poster and ask them if I say this and how they will have the, uh, the, the sentence frames to Instead of this, you can think this and I'll have them work together as a group and decide where you would put the sentence frames to match the instead of, I can think of this. The story I chose too, because um, it says it's a million mistakes. I could use this in, in uh, a couple of times over and over again. I know it's so cute. The kids would, would mm -hmm. hear it because it's so cute. But um, for one of them, it would be, uh, her attitude about learning. The other ones are, the other time I would talk about the story or the topic I'd bring is, what did she do different? Um, another one is, what is she saying to herself? So I would want to make this short so that it's not so long because it's third grade. Their attention span is short, but enough that I could uh, bring it in a couple of times throughout the year and they wouldn't get bored, but it has really good um, instead of what could you say to yourself, the growth mindset. Okay. Um, that's my yeah. presentation. So, you know, um, it's, it, I love the fact that you thought about, well, you know, with the kids, you know, what's something that they will, that a, a large number of kids stumble on, um, and you know, you multiple multiplication and division, and you're using this before they get into that stumbling yes. you know you, you're setting out the beginning of the school year so that they're anchored with things that they already know that they could say and even though they're going to forget about forget them you've established it so that you you know you can remind them as you said you know run through the story and run through some of these slides during the course of the year uh to yes. remind them you're um you're bringing up their self-awareness that because they probably never even thought of the fact that they could that there's two different voices and they could choose to listen to yes. either one you're giving them you're empowering them by giving them the choice to do this you're giving them affirmations and we know that affirmations have a positive net effect especially when they're when they're said more than once i love mm -hmm. the one about the plan a you know like and good thing there's <laughs> 25 more letters i think kids are you know kids would really love that and you're also getting the kids to be um you know to work with each other to yes. uh to bolster the the, the each, each other up so just there's so many aspects of this lesson that uh, that I really loved. Thank you. Thank no, you. No, thank you. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> I think this is valuable for everybody. Uh, any other comments? Any comments from from people? Any other like elementary school teachers? So so um, anyhow, uh, really really good work, Maribel. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so who wants to who wants to go next? You see, it's fun, right? I guess I'll go. Okay. Um, I can't see who 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 said that. Mike Bettinson. Okay. Um, are you yet a a um? You, okay, so you're not yet a co-host. Let me make you a co-host. Um and um do you want to do you want to share or do you want me to share uh go ahead okay so now let me let me find him oops so what's that up there okay and then i'll share the screen Okay. 
Okay. So I kind of went like uh, I don't know if it's different or I've been I've coached for a long time. So I kind of went at it coaching mindset, but um I also teach applied math. So we do a lot of group stuff. And so I can kind of relate it to the classroom along with coaching. So um, you can go to the next screen. So I kind of put quotes in that related to stuff I'm talking about. Um, this is one quote. Um, it's leaning more towards baseball because I've coached a lot of baseball. Um, and so the, the three minute breath exercise that we had, I think in the first session, um, that I have the kids do in groups when we do group projects. Um, I do it a lot, uh, when I'm coaching, um, not particular this one, but something like that, but it's always, it always feels good to do it at the start when I'm doing things, uh, just to get you relaxed. Um, I do different types of stuff, but like I said, not particularly this one. Um, but that's what I do. And then the quote every day is a new opportunity. You can build on yesterday's success or put its failures behind you and start over again. Um, and I kind of believe in that. I do a lot of quotes when I'm coaching, so I like a lot of these. So, um, next screen. So, I, the positive mindset: if you work hard enough to achieve your goal, you will someday achieve it. And I kind of switch it to we instead of I, because I, you know, do that a lot in the group situation and coaching. That instead of saying we can't, perhaps we can. I think we can, I know we can, and we are going to do this. And I, I do, the, I do a lot of that in, in math when I'm talking as a group before we do projects. Um, Cause you hear a bunch of different things in, in the groups. And uh, I do a lot of it in coaching. It, a lot of times gets kids fired up when they hear me talking about being positive and, uh, um, that I believe in them and, uh, you usually get a lot of good results, uh, showing the positive mindset, uh, that they can see. So, uh, next slide. A uh, good coach can change a game. A great coach can change a life and that, that can be in the classroom or, uh, coaching. And then I really believe in this. This is one of my favorite quotes. Um, and I, I wrote, uh, successful coaching philosophy is an important ingredient that goes beyond teaching the fundamentals of the game. It encompasses a holistic approach that molds players into being successful. It lies in the winning mindset where discipline, resilience, and teamwork are instilled from the very beginning. So I kind of believe in that, that it, it Whenever you're off to a good start, um, the results usually end up being good. So I try to always start off with positive notes when, when we're in the classroom or on the field, uh, just to get the kids thinking that that uh, to be positive and that we'll uh, get things done uh, with discipline and teamwork. Um, a good coach or teacher, you can say, understand that success is not just measured by the number of, of wins, but by the growth and development of each player, by instilling a winning mentality and love for the game or love for me, love for math. And a positive mindset becomes a foundation upon which future success is built. Um, next slide. Um this is learning to adapt because you always have to do it in the classroom besides on the baseball field. Um, Cause like I said, I do a lot of group stuff in math. Um, they're always doing different projects as far as construction or something like that, that we're doing for uh, our math projects. Um, and I always change them into different groups. So you always get a different variety. I don't let them stay in the same group all the time. 
um, because everybody has different personalities. Uh, So as long as you you know the personalities and know uh, the things you're looking for, that things can be different. Um, I do a lot of monitoring around as far as the group stuff is going on. And I try to instill in them that, you know, as long as you work together and uh, understand each other, that you can get your projects done that you're doing or work as a team and, and get things and uh, get things accomplished. That's it. That's cool. Yeah. So, and I, and I think, you're you're gearing this for um you know as much for the for teachers as as giving this to kids right because yeah i i could see this being part of professional development for a group of coaches or a group of teachers as well as i could see it um you know you've you're running these slides for kids yeah. uh, and it it's so it's cool how it's you know coaching whether you're doing coaching or you're teaching or you're teaching math or really, or you're in a leadership position or, um, or you're managing, it's, it's, it, it, it's all um, about building a, you know, your winning attitude um, and using the past as feedback rather than using the past as regret. Right. And the sports right. analogies that you, that you wrote really, uh, really emphasize that. And the way you progressed from the, I can't, that you can go through a progression like, well, I can't, well, why don't we start off with like, perhaps I can and move, you know, and move on or, or in a team sport, even better, we, you know, we can't, well, perhaps we can. And then all the way to, yeah, we can, we can do it. Let's, let's go. Uh, And, and then the way you linked what they're doing, you know, because they're doing something very specific, whether it's baseball or, um, or algebra or, or whatever, but then you linked it back to life. It's like, you know, um, you know, these are real life skills of persistence and building, uh, you know, building competent, happy people. That's, that's far. What's right. Far if you, if you get them in the good mindset, it reflects not only in the classroom or field or just everyday life. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought, you know, you, you know, in a, it's it just, you know, it's, it's what six or seven slides, but it's just like it, it, you hit all those areas. Yeah. I thought that's great. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Thanks for sharing. Any any other comments? I like the way um, he used we can. I think I read somewhere where some students have really low self-esteem that it takes the we because they can kind of like um, tag on someone else's we can in order mm-hmm. to help them feel the same way like we can even though mm-hmm. sometimes they can't feel it for themselves so i thought that was a pretty good and the progression like you said that was really great yeah thank you. yeah i agree okay we probably have time for one more so who's stepping up to present there's so many good lessons somebody's got it I'll go, Amy Carlson. Great. Okay, Amy, great. And did I make you a co-host yet? Or mm, let me know. It, so. it doesn't look like it. Okay, so I'll make you a co-host. Uh, and would you like to present, or would you like me to um, put it on my screen? Sure, I'll, I can. Um, you go ahead and pull it up on your screen. Okay, let's see how it... Please. Okay, so good. Let me share the screen. Uh, okay, got it. Okay. And then, can you make it bigger or? Yeah, I can. Um, let's see. Uh, huh, now I can't find the present on here. It's a PDF. Um, so I don't know. Uh, as long as I can pull it up online so I can read it. Just one sec. Okay, how's that? That's a little, that's a little bit bigger. All right, let me go. Or how about this? How about that? Um, I can see it on mine. How's this? Is that better? Yeah. 
Okay. Perfect. All right. So yeah, I just did um, five minute gratitude practice for anyone. And especially if you're cultivating gratitude into your life or just teaching someone else to have gratitude. Um, you can also guide someone through it. And next slide. Right. Okay. All right. Um, uh, and then it just kind of begins, you know, by using your breath to anchor yourself and be in the moment, um, you know, just really focusing on the here and now, um, you focus on your breathing, you can, um, practice letting go of the busyness of our lives and continue to practice in with the breath. And as you continue to do that, um, you know, start to focus your attention on gratitude. Next slide. Um, and then believe me, I didn't, I didn't make all this up on my own. I've just been taught this before and I just tweaked it into different ways. Just so mm -hmm. you guys know, <laughs> I'm not that brilliant. No. Um, and then the next part is after, you know, you're continuing to focus on your breathing and then you look for something that's in your sight and, um, you can, you know, search for one thing that you appreciate that you can see um, something that maybe somebody's made for you or created something that pleases your eyes. You know, it could be colors or movement. Um, the important thing is to realize that it will never be like this again. And then you just kind of question yourself or help, you know, if you're, you know, walking people through it, you know, you just ask the question, like, do you feel the gratitude? Are you able to see it? Appreciate mm -hmm. it. And next slide. Okay. Um, and then as you're continuing to go through this, you know, you're practicing on breathing and then you uh, focus now on, you know, something that you can smell and appreciate. And then you continue with your breathing. It could be something like someone's cooking you breakfast or maybe it's your like stinky little pet that you love so much. Um, maybe it's a, a memory of something that you've smelled in the past, you know, that's brought you joy or smile to your face or comfort. Um, and then you just, you know, really pay attention to that scent. And then, you know, you, you ask yourself or ask your crowd, you know, are you feeling the gratitude? Are you finding gratitude for this beautiful present moment? Um, the next little part is, uh, sound, um, and you continue to breathe really nice and focused and, um, you focus on sound and you start to notice like something that you can hear, um, and how it feels really to actually listen or hear, um, you can ask yourself what you hear or a sound, several sounds, um, something that you notice and and within that sound you know is it soft or is it loud or is it near is or is it distant and then can you feel the gratitude to hear maybe it's just the peaceful silence or the beat of your heart maybe you can play music at this time that brings you peace um then it now it's going to touch and texture. Is there something um, by you that you could touch a soft blanket or some kind of material that has fabulous texture? Or maybe there is someone there to hug or get a hug from. Maybe it is you that needs the hug and it's okay to give yourself one. Reflect on whatever it is and how grateful you are for it. Um, now we're shifting to, um, objects that are around you, um, with a heart of gratitude, uh, look for items someone has given you, made for you, something you've bought while traveling, something you inherited, anything that brings you joy. Think of the effort it took to find the object for yourself or that someone else did. Think about a pretty great, or think about the pretty gift, grip, the gift wrap it came in and the effort someone took to wrap it just for you. 
find some things that took effort to make and reflect on how you are thought of. And then the last one, and you can make these, you know, longer, shorter. It can be, you know, however one wishes to do this. No, right or wrong, that's for sure. Because it's talking about Brad too. Okay, mm -hmm. last part. Um, take this gratitude uh, with you through the day. Say thank you to everyone today. Send a text to say thank you. And even say thank you to yourself for being you and all that you do each day. Beautiful. Thank you. So, you know, as, as, as you were going through that, I was thinking you went really beyond the course because we didn't go, go much. I don't even know how much we did gratitude. Maybe we didn't. But gratitude, the act, actually feeling gratitude is something that tends to make us really happy. And if we're feeling anxious or, or uh, upset or um, a, well, any of the bad uh, feelings, thinking about things that, that give us gratitude is one way of coming out of it. So that was really phenomenal. And you link that to the senses. So you had people pay attention to different senses, um, you know, feeling something and being really mindfulness about that and, or mindful about that and sensing and, and being grateful for it. And then seeing something and then smelling something. So you're getting people into getting the kids into being mindful at the same time, rewarding themselves by being grateful and putting them in the putting them in in the mood to be really curious and uh, and resourceful. I that's uh, what a nice lesson. What a, uh, have you had a chance to do this with the kids yet? Um, yes, and well, you know, kind of the the baseline of our environment in there is we talk a lot about gratitude, actually. And it's just wonderful. And you can see how it grows, you know, like throughout the school year. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just a blessing. And I know that if gratitude's up in my up in my mind, just like you said, then you know, life feels pretty darn good. <laughs> right. Yeah. And when I'm not doing that, it's usually the that that's my solution. That's kind of my mm -hmm. answer. Like, okay, how can I practice gratitude? And so we do that. Um, you know, it could be something like that, what I showed you guys, or it could be just, you know, a tidbit, like something smaller too. But we we definitely do all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you must um, you must be really inspiring to the to the kids. It's really. I hope yeah. so. I really yeah. do. Uh -huh. uh, and th th some gr some comments also in in the chat. You know, the accessibility needs a practice and the gratitude lesson, and then the practice of self awareness and being in the mo in the moment, um, and the way you end the presentation. Um, uh, good comments in the chat also if you have a chance to take a look at the chat oh okay thank you okay uh yeah so uh so you know the, as always you know we don't get a chance to go through everybody but we got through we did get you know five you saw five different examples and they were all they really were very different examples of taking different things from the course and applying them to different audiences elementary students um kids in um well basically in 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 jail um uh, adults high school kids middle middle school kids in sports and academics um you know really that's that they kind of pulls together the the fact that you know be, being able to mind shift gets you into resourceful uh state of mind whatever you're doing and being and part of that is is the self-awareness uh part of that is changing from the negative self-talk to the uh to the positive self-talk um and part of it is uh, being being able to just calm your uh, calm your emotions, calm your your limbic mind by uh, you know taking some type of a break, distracting it through gratitude or thinking of senses or or whatever. So um, I, uh, I just want to thank you all for uh, for taking the class, um, and I hope you all have a phenomenal summer. And, um, you know, maybe uh, maybe we'll get a community going um, towards the end of the summer or, or, or beginning of the fall. Um, and, you know, I hope to see you all one way or another uh, sometime in the future. So thank thank you. I'll stay on. I'm going to stop the recording, uh, my recording. I think this, uh,